I, I'm really optimistic. But I'm an optimistic person in general. I think you can build things and, and the world gets better. But um, with AI especially, I'm really optimistic. And I think that people who are naysayers and, and kind of try to drum up these doomsday scenarios are... Um, I, I just I don't understand it. I think it's 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 really um, negative, and, and in some ways, I actually think it's it's pretty irresponsible. Irresponsible, Elon Musk, data charged Zuckerberg, saying, "I've spoken to Mark about this. His understanding of the subject is limited." He said, "Ouch!" That stinging rebuke. Mikio Kaku joins me, professor of physics and host of Sci-Fi Science on the Science Channel. Good to see you, sir. Glad to be on. Who do you support? Musk with his doomsday scenario or Zuckerberg with his irresponsible? To understand this, you have to understand love and war. The key to love and war is timing. Timing is everything. So in the short term, I think Mark Zuckerberg is right. On a scale of 20, 30 years, I mean, give me a break. I mean, robots have the intelligence of a cockroach. However, in the long term, as the decades roll by, then the words of Elon Musk become more and more prophetic. Like when the airplane was first invented, it was used for good, to deliver mail, to deliver passengers, but then war took place, and people began to develop airplanes that could drop bombs. Right, now, in which case, Musk is probably right, because he is prophetically looking to what the long-term dangers are, while Zuckerberg, maybe with the youth of millennialism, it's just thinking about tomorrow. Well, however, if you're an entrepreneur and you, you want to become the next billionaire, you're going to follow Zuckerberg because that's where the action is going to be. In the next few decades, we're talking about the uh, AI industry being bigger than the automobile industry today. Think about that. There's an army of billionaires waiting to be minted if you follow the work of Zuckerberg. However, in the long term, as the decades roll by, we have to realize that Elon, Elon Musk is prophetic, that we have to worry about these things. So should we be, even though there is no consensus, and it would be very difficult to get agreement at international levels, should we now be starting to look for agreement on proper regulation of AI? There's no harm trying. However, the key turning point, the key turning point in this whole controversy is the question of self-awareness. Robots today do not know they're robots. That's the bottom line. They have no self-awareness whatsoever. However, in the coming decades, you can foresee the time when robots become as smart as a mouse, a rabbit, a dog or a cat, and perhaps by the end of the century, as smart as a monkey. At that point, they will have limited self-awareness. They'll be super strong. At that point, watch out. But we have time. We have several decades to go. And like I said, billionaires are waiting to be minted, waiting in, in the wings to, to, take, to take artificial intelligence to the marketplace. Okay, but looking at, uh, at that argument, um, I can't help you. I mean, it's the old killing robots idea, isn't it? The drone robots, the robots that you send out into the field and will kill anything in its sight. And automatic killing machines. Yes. That's the danger today. But they're not self-aware. Now, automatic killing machines can recognize the human form. Pattern recognition, they can identify the human form. And if they go berserk, they are just killing machines that will kill humans in this Should we ban them? I think there should be regulations. There should be treaties. Uh, Stephen Hawking, my colleagues, yeah. have argued against automatic killing machines that are out of control. But they're not self-aware. They're not like Arnold Schwarzenegger who plots and schemes and, and connives trying to take over humanity. So that's a turning point. We do not have robots that are self-aware yet. So I, I, this fascinating Zuckerberg Musk, I hear what you say in terms of who's right now and who's right long term, but I'm left with this feeling of who should I be listening to? I think you should listen to both. It depends oh. on who you are. If you're an entrepreneur, listen to Zuckerberg, because that's where the money is. If you were a long-term philosopher worrying about the fate of humanity, then, of course, Elon Musk is onto something. Just like the airplane, the, the bow and arrow, the hammer, all these inventions were first invented for domestic and for good purposes. Later, they found, we found out we could use airplanes and bows and arrows for war as well as for good. It's a question of balancing the There's two. There's an inevitability that we will use these things for evil deeds. 
Unfortunately, uh, every weapon that has ever been invented has been used in warfare. And so, yeah, we have to worry about that long term. Elon Musk is onto something. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Professor. Very good of you to come in and right. help us understand. Thank you.